You're listening to The Jenny McCarthy Show on Sirius XM Stars. Welcome back to the show. I'm Jenny McCarthy Wahlberg again, of course, with my lovely Donnie Wahlberg. Yes, yes, yes. You guys yes, have yes, just yes. heard us 15 minutes talk about our love of the show, The Crown. Yes. Amongst everyone I've talked to, there's no one that doesn't love it. Season three is streaming on Netflix right now. Um, Josh O'Connor, welcome to our show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk to you guys. Wow. Can We're we excited to. Bravo. Right? You are a true talent. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. Really, we have no questions. We're just gonna we're just kiss gonna, your ass for an hour. Just complimenting you. That's, that's, all that's, we're that's, do. that's the dream. That's why I'm here. No, I'm joking. No, I was literally saying before you came on that, uh, you know, season one and two, we got so invested. So invested. And your character really kind of came to prominence in season three in the show. And yeah. It, um, you're when it changed cast, it was tough. It was tough for me as a viewer to suddenly like, wait a minute, I, I got used to these other characters. New, yeah. you're right. And you, you single handedly saved the show for me. Like I was so blown away by your performance. You, you took a character, a human being, Prince Charles, who I, you know, I don't, of course I know who he is. I know all about him. I've watched him get married and divorced and the whole nine. But I mean, you brought such a, empathy and compassion and admiration to this man who we've known for years. I mean, to do that, to bring something, and it's really a testament to your work. I mean, the scene work and the, the acting, uh, I'm, I'm dead serious. Just absolutely underrated performance, amazing performance. You, you just brought, you made people change their opinion of a man they've known for their entire lives. That's, that really says a lot about your work. Told you we're just going to keep complimenting yes. you. There will be a question, which was the one I was dying to ask. Has Prince Charles contacted you or have you heard that Prince Charles has seen you portray him yet? It's a great question. I did. First of all, thank you. That's very kind. And thank you very much. But, um, You're welcome. Uh, I have, yeah, I haven't. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know whether they watch it. It's one of those things where, I mean, I, you imagine that they would. I think if anyone ever made a, a TV show about me, A, it would be incredibly boring. Uh, but B, <laughs> I would 100% watch it because you'd want to see all those things come to life. I think it's, I think it's difficult. I think um, certainly in series three, as you said, I think I'm like you. I grew up kind of indifferent I didn't know I knew that they were there but I'm, I'm not a royalist I probably say I'm kind of a republican which in the UK is like you know slightly different to the US but basically right. disinterested in the in the um royal family in the monarchy mm -hmm. and so I just I guess what was fun was falling in love with him as a character as I was playing him and and I have great sympathy for him in series three um, and part of the attraction about doing it was taking someone who people do feel a sort of indifference about and try and turn him into something that feels um, sympathetic, basically. You, you oh. succeeded. I, I, I would say they they must watch it based on the show. Everything that came on TV about them ever, they would sit yeah. down and gather and watch it like this ritual, you know, and they'd all comment on it and they'd be briefed on it and stuff. I mean, they have to have seen it. And it's got to be interesting because it's not like Game of Thrones where the script, you know, I'm sure is still secretive, but we know where the story goes, obviously. So yeah. in doing so, do you feel more pressure to be accurate or do you just go into the world of acting of let me make this my own knowing the player but let me make this my own yeah it's a it's it's actually something i don't know the answer in some ways but i think it's something that i'm kind of like con con um continually grappling with i guess is that i remember this is like slightly long-winded but i'll tell you anyway there's a, a great film i saw a f um, few years ago called i'm not there which is about bob dylan and it was a beautiful biopic where it was like eight or nine different actors playing different versions of Dylan. So it was like um, Kate Blanchett played a version. There was like Heath Ledger, um, uh, Christian Bale. And there's all kind of playing different. Um, there was like the public eye version of Dylan. There was the young uh, Woody Guthrie inspired Bob Dylan. And so they all kind of went around like this. And um, I loved it because most of them weren't recognizable as Dylan. 
It was like nothing we have seen of Dylan. And I thought that was, to me, that was the most interesting thing about Charles was I didn't want to play, create something that felt like you'd sit there and you go, this is an impression or an impersonation. Mm -hmm. Right. I wanted to be truthful to the character and create a character that felt in, in and of its own, a separate entity to the real Prince Charles. If that makes sense. I don't know. It makes, makes perfect sense. Absolutely. And you Absolutely. nailed that. I'm talking to Josh O'Connor, The Crown, season three streaming on Netflix right now. Can you do that amazing tongue twister? Do you remember it? And how hard was that to memorize? Yeah, it's a good, um, I, I probably can't remember, I can try, but I, I, um, it was really hard. It was a kind of, it's funny because they're sort of, our drama school system in the UK, where we, you know, you go to drama school when you're 18, like university or college, and then you go out and be a professional actor, if you're lucky. And at drama school, every single day, we, he would start the day with tongue twisters. So when I read, when I spoke to the writers, and they were like, we're going to start this episode with him showing off to the tutor that he can do these tongue twisters. I was like, great, I know them all. I don't have to learn the lines. But they managed to somehow find three of the only ones that I don't know. <laughs> and so there I was like, I was like, guys, can we do this one? And they were like, no, you're doing these. So it took me a long time. I pro- almost certainly can't remember them. We were, we were in the bedroom, lying on the bed, watching you do that. And I literally... I got post-traumatic stress from past acting work of mine where I really had to work like really, really hard. And, (laughs) you know, I've been doing a series for 10 years now. Right. So I I know the character like the back of my hand. Of course, it's hard work, but, you know, there's never I'm never going to have to do that. What you did. And I literally felt post-traumatic stress. And I looked over at Jenny. I was like, I don't know if I could I could ever the amount of effort that this young man put into this part. I, I I mean, I felt traumatized and I was like, I'm not worthy. Like I couldn't do that again after having gone through hard work in my life. I'm 50 now. I was like, I don't know that I could dig that deep. The, that the place you went in the episode, not just that, I mean, in the speech and in Wales and everything. I mean, just, just masterful work. Just it, it wonderful. Is. I, and I do want to touch back on the family. You know, they seem to suppress emotions. So what was the most draining scene for you to film? Yeah, it's, that's a, another great question. Because I think it's something we talk about quite a lot on the show is that so much, and it's a, it's a real joy to get to play it because it's the, the, the most enjoyable thing, as you guys know, when you're acting is being, is, um, playing the opposite to what's written on the page and trying to kind of hide things and, and playing games with each other. And the final scene in the Welsh episode um, is with uh, Olivia Coleman and I in a room and he comes, Prince Charles comes back after the investiture and no one's there to say well done. No one's there to pat him on the back. All he really wants is a hug from his mum. But he shares his mum with an entire nation, with the entire Commonwealth. And so there's a constant battle there. And what was really interesting is that you come away from a scene like that. You know, all these kind of exhausting scenes like tongue twisters or the Welsh investiture speech or whatever, the the things that seem like they'd be the most exhausting. But the scene with just her and I in a room having it out (laughs) without and not being able to say what you really want to say and not being able to cry not being able to hug your mum. They were the, they were the most, that scene for me was the most exhausting because emotionally yeah. you're drained. Yeah. I mean, even as, as actors or any performers, when you get off of a stage, when you're done with the scene, that's really emotional. You want your makeup artist to be like, yo, that was really good. You know what I mean? You want sometimes a little bit of acknowledgement, yeah. the director to be like brilliant. And to just think about him in real life, going through those real situations, not having that. It's yeah. just even so more painful. And also as an actor, not, you know, that's like you said, playing against what's written is, is really fun. And it's, it's fun. That's the joy, right. That you yeah. can get every day in a, especially in a redundant situation. But yeah. sometimes as actors, we want to go somewhere and to have the restraint and to trust it, you know, it's really difficult um, to, to think you're achieving something in a scene where you're suppressing everything that it's right. going to resonate and have the power 
that it actually ended up having. It's more powerful, right? Now, did you learn that in that scene? Is did you did you see it back and go, wow, okay? Or did you have concerns that I'm not being allowed to play enough in this moment? Or were you already so much in the zone of the character that you didn't really worry about it and you already did trust it? Yeah, I, I think again, it's that it's the thing of like. I think in that partic- in that particular scene, I remember coming away and I was so nervous because it was. I think it was the first scene I actually shot on oh the ground. Oh my god! This terrifying thing, and I knew Olivia Coleman a little bit. I'd worked with her before, so she was, and she's great, and she's very good at kind of settling. But uh, but to kind of turn up in this huge set, and I I grew up on you know the last sort of five six years I've been making indie films and. You know, it was like tiny crews. And then suddenly the crown set is huge and there's huge right. crew and and it's a machine. You know, those series, as you guys know, again, is oh, like really? they're a machine. Everyone knows each other. Yeah, and so you nip in <laughs> your first, first day. And I just, I think I just, I think I was so focused on nerves, on the kind of just get the scene done, that by, it took up maybe five or six uh, cracks, five or six uh, takes to finally feel like, now I'm just in it and it was just plain sailing and, and, and fun. But I take your point. I think the thing is sometimes you want the payoff of like that, that moment in a scene where a single tear drops. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the ego, the, the temptation. Ego. Yes. Yeah. But I think actually, I don't know about you guys, but I always think far more powerful is seeing someone trying not to cry. That's right. That's cry. right. And I think that's ultimately my aim and anyone and, most actors aim is to try and get that point across. Yeah. A a wise actor, friend of mine, Tom Selleck once said, you know, if the hero cries, you don't cry for him and you not crying and, you know, and, and staying with that choice and trusting it really put you in, put Charles in your character in the role of a hero. You know, if you just cried, it becomes about, you know, uh, uh, the queen having to deal with another over emotional person instead Finding that grace and that dignity really thrust Charles in, in your role right into the role of, okay, he's, he, he's so, has so much gravity and so much weight with him that it literally, it did exactly what the intention was, in my opinion. It just made your character just so powerful. And so I know it's a human being, so I hate to keep saying character, but I, I, I trust everyone. I, I do want to ask, I mean. cause you did mention nerves and, um, a lot of people can relate to having to do things and that they're really nervous. Where, what do you do to get over those butterflies, especially that first day? Like, where do you, what do you do with them? I think it's all about prep and preparation and just feeling, I always think it sounds like a really boring thing, but I, I'm very dyslexic. And, uh, and it takes me a long time to learn lines. It takes me a long line, a long time to kind of get every, all the kind of prep work into place. And I also am obsessively into creating character. And so I really enjoy like coming up with a backstory and, and, and coming up with like little scents that like remind me of Charles or images and stuff like that. So all that prep, I think if you've, particularly for a scene like that, just knowing your lines, like inside out and so that ev- so that you're never thinking like what's coming next what's the moment what's the next beat what's happening it's just kind of like poetry in motion it's just kind of you're just it's like ha- having the freedom to kind of bat something and try something else that i think that always puts nerves at, at, at ease in a way because yeah, I don't know why but i think that's it's true it, and i yeah. think that goes across the board for it covers a lot of things when yeah. you're prepared when you feel prepared, then you're not as nervous. It's like when practice and preparation prevent poor performance under pressure. There you go. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. There you go. That's right. What do we, what can we look forward to in the next season? Is there anything that you can say? Um, Yeah. I mean, I can tell you that we're going to span most of uh, Charles and Diana's marriage. So, uh, which is obviously, uh, has its huge ups and its huge downs. And um, it, as is always the way with the crown, it won't be told as we kind of know it. And it will be told in a, in a way that I think what's brilliant about Peter Morgan's writing is it always, I always find it, it feels balanced. And that there's always, you know, there's one side of the argument or one side of the kind of 
the viewpoint, the media's view, and then there's the sort of character, what happens behind closed doors, essentially. And so it's been thrilling because I think the Charles and Diana story is is so feels so fresh to all of us and feels right. yeah, you know, it doesn't matter if like sounds like the three of us and are kind of disinterested in the monarchy previous to the crown. I think regardless of what you think of the monarchy and regardless of whether you're interested, you couldn't avoid Charles and Diana. So it does feel like a really fresh, uh, fresh thing, really. Yeah. Did What kind of conversations did you have with him, Peter, about the show? What kind of, a, did he have uh, like notes about approach or did he really let you do your own thing? He was, yeah, he was really good about letting me kind of run away, run away a bit. I mean, I was sort of, I was quite fortunate because I came in, halfway through they've been filming for a few months um already <clears throat> and so i sort of came in halfway through and uh just jumped in and just took it took it by its horns really and i think i think the one thing that i remember in terms of kind of going through it i remember he was really keen for me to spend a lot spend a lot of time with the tailor who made all the clothes because I think he told me that Prince Charles, and I've later discovered Prince Charles is obsessive about um, his suits and everything's put in the right place. And that was a really good note from him because it meant that um, all those things that Charles does, like he checks his his cufflinks and then checks a pocket watch and then waves. Right. Every time he gets out of a car, he does the same movement of like that. And that all that kind of helped create that sort of, the iconic Charles, I guess. But the thing that I think, remember the thing that really got me that Peter said was, it's actually a line that's in episode eight of The Crown, series three, where he says, um, he's comparing Charles' predicament to The Dangling Man by Saul Bellow. And he says, he's waiting, there's a character in Dangling Man who's waiting to be drafted to go to war because, and he actually wants to be drafted because it will give his life meaning. And it's with Charles, he's waiting for his mother to die. And he actually wants his mother to die because then he'll, his life will have meaning. And I think that to me was like, I was in. It was like such a huge... He's, right? he's still waiting. <laughs> he's still waiting. It's crazy. It's crazy. How old is the queen now? Uh, how old is she? I th- she's Is she in like her 90s? 90s right? I definitely know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. And, and I mean, is England done talking about Meghan and Harry yet? Or is it still? I feel like that. Honestly, I honestly, I really feel like they're always talking about Meghan and Harry. I have no idea. Anytime anyone says, what do you think about what's come out today? I'm like, I, I mean, I have no idea what's come out today. <laughs> so that yeah. I think they're probably still talking about them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about them here too. Uh, we don't usually talk about it. That's what's funny. But we talked for a good thirty minutes before you showed up today. Oh, no so way. we, yeah, we we had we had all types of opinions. But um, do you, now they've said that the crown may not go that far into the future. Do you think they'll change their mind? Yeah, and do you think they should change their mind? Because it seems like a just a complete replay of stuff that we watched in season one and two. It's fascinating. Um, I think it's, I think it's always going to be fascinating and there's, there are moments, I think every day where I think, oh, this will be a great moment when the crown gets to it, you know, like, right. Right. like coronavirus, I'm like, God, this is going to be good for the crown right. or like Harry and Meghan. It's like, we're living out the moments in the crown, you know, generations on, but I think I understand why they're saying that it'll be one more series after four. And then I think the closer you get to 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 now it becomes i think it becomes a little bit more sensitive um i think it kind of brings up that debate of talking about people who are living in a kind of slightly soap opera way um i think what's brilliant and uh, about peter's writing is that it's you know we touched on earlier like t- talking about Prince Charles as a character or as a real person. I think it's better to talk about them as characters. It is a work of fiction. It is a drama. And I think the closer you get to kind of the the real life, the up-to-date world, it becomes a little hazy, I think. So I think it's the right decision. It is the right decision, even though I don't want to be, I don't want the crown to ever end. It's so uh, good. Um, but yeah, but season four is going to be so, uh, I can't wait. When are we expecting season four? I don't know now because I think everything's sort of shifting because of what's going on. So did you um, finish filming before the quarantine? Just finished. So we were, 
I think I think we had a couple of bits to kind of tie up, and I don't know. Hopefully, we'll have a moment to tie those loose ends up, but we're pretty much there. So we do have something ready to go, I think. But it, um, <sighs> we just, uh, I think there's probably pro- post production and all that stuff going on. So. But we need it now, Josh O'Connor. Now, um, what a pleasure talking to you. Congratulations on your success. I I cannot wait to watch your future and your your work ahead. You're so brilliant. We can go on and on, on and on, like Donnie said. Just thank you for the the gift that you're giving us in the Crown season three streaming on Netflix right now. Josh O'Connor, come back, will you please? I will. I'd love to. Thanks so much for having I me. You too. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. We'll be right back, guys. 